One of the first games to launch with the Famicom during its 1983 debut in Japan, baseball is a sport popular both overseas and in the United States. Its relative simplicity made it a go-to option for home console release. While there are over a dozen baseball-themed games for various other platforms, most of them were significantly more rudimentary than Nintendo's. Featuring stick figures running from base to base, as seen in this footage from the Intellivision ECS's World Series Major League Baseball, too much automation in the gameplay, or complex controls that didn't fit the simple controllers well. Thus, while from today's perspective, NES Baseball looks and feels lackluster at best, it still managed to be the best at-home experience of the sport available at the time. Nintendo didn't attempt to portray each player as an anatomically accurate wireframe, but rather used more cartoony visuals to smooth out the look of the game, a hallmark of the designer, Shigeru Miyamoto. This design choice has been utilized throughout many Nintendo games, see Wind Waker as a notable example, and usually helps the game age gracefully as a result. In addition, baseball is chock full of small, detailed animations, such as the pitcher turning his head to look at the bases before throwing his ball, or the outfielder's catching animations changing depending on the ball's positioning relative to their bodies. While these aren't particularly notable by today's standards, they certainly do help bring the game to life. Featuring both single-player against the CPU and two-player versus mode, the gameplay is solid enough for a sports title releasing in 1985. Most of it comes down to pitching and batting. From the pitcher's side, you have control over where the ball goes, how fast you throw it, and what spin you apply. Batting, on the other hand, just has you press A when the ball comes at you, but the timing is quite strict, and as the press of this button doesn't take into account the pullback animation of the swing, the player has to include this into the equation. Outfielding is almost entirely automated. The computer will move the fielders into position, but the player gets to control which base they throw the ball to. Other than the beginning screen that allows the player to choose their team's colors, there isn't any further customization regarding CPU difficulty or anything else, although that may be too much to ask for a launch title that's named after the sport that it portrays. Regardless of baseball's simplistic design, it has been re-released on several Nintendo consoles since its American launch in 1985, including an abysmal port on the Game Boy, a purchasable game in Animal Crossing for the GameCube, and an e-reader card pack. Nintendo also decided to Mario-ify the title through Mario Superstar Baseball on the GameCube, as well as its sequel, Super Mario Sluggers on the Wii. This would be far from the last time Nintendo added their mascot to simple sports titles with the quirky addition of items and a story mode in order to spruce things up. Baseball was also a direct source of inspiration for many titles following it, such as RBI Baseball on the NES, a series releasing yearly titles to this day. It didn't cause a massive splash in the field of baseball video games, but it certainly did set a higher standard of quality than any game previously released. A recurring theme you'll notice throughout this section on the sports series is how much inspiration Nintendo took from themselves when releasing new titles. The most notable of these, in my opinion, is with Wii Sports, launching with the Wii in 2006. Fundamentally, baseball on the NES and baseball on Wii Sports were almost identical. Both utilized these more cartoony graphics, although the Wii version used the self-insert Mii characters. Both came out at launch with a collection of Nintendo-published sports titles, and gameplay for both consisted almost entirely of just batting and pitching. Though, whereas the NES version allows for some control in the outfield, that part of the experience is automatic on the Wii. Yes, Nintendo actually simplified the NES version 21 years after it first hit store shelves. Wii Sports Baseball functioned largely as a tech demo that showed off the many ways that the Wii Remote and its motion controls could be utilized. These motion controls had the player mimic the motions made by the sprite, which allowed swinging and pitching to feel a lot more natural than the button pressing of an NES controller. While not perfect, motion controls do allow for much more room for error in the timing of batting. However, NES Baseball wasn't too far off from a tech demo itself. As an early release, it did a great job of showing off what the NES was capable of, both graphically and functionally. The Wii launched 21 years after Nintendo first put out the NES in America, and after playing both of these games back to back, it's easy to see where Wii Sports Baseball took its inspiration. In the end, both set out to make a simple sport as accessible as possible to a new audience of video game players, and by each of their relative sales numbers, it's hard to claim that either failed. 
While it may have been eclipsed by a flood of baseball-related titles in the years following its release, it is undeniable that, as one of the launch titles for the NES, baseball created a new baseline for baseball as a video game. I wouldn't recommend playing it today. It hasn't held up that well compared to some other black box titles. However, at the time, it was a home run to many.